everyone, welcome to another flower farming science classroom video. Today, we're gonna to talk about one of my favorite green fillers and that is mountain mint. But specifically, we're gonna talk about Pycnanthemum muticum, which is a very specific mountain mint that I have loved to grow and that I am seeing gaining popularity. So I thought this would be a good video for us to break into two parts. One, classroom study, but then two, taking a field trip out into my field to show you various stages of the mountain mint that I've had from when I got them in nursery flats earlier in the season to those started from seed and what they look like right now. So here is today's agenda. We are gonna start off talking about why you should be considering growing mountain mint if you haven't yet already. We're gonna talk a little bit about some 101 and some stuff that is pertinent to growing mountain mint. And then of course, when we go into the field, I already talked about what I'm gonna go over, but we're also gonna talk briefly about selling mountain mint, putting it in your bouquets and selling it to florists in straight bunches and what those numbers look like. So let's talk first about why you should be considering growing mountain mint. I think mountain mint is something for you to consider if you make mixed bouquets or even if you sell to florists. So the first thing is that just a couple of sprigs adds a lot of abundance and makes a bouquet feel very full and very lush. Not to mention the color is absolutely fantastic. It pairs against everything. You'll see that later when you let it flower, there's these white little flowering heads that also create a little pop in that bouquet. But more importantly, it has a really, really nice scent. It's not as aggressive in scent as other mints. Think about spearmint or peppermint. It doesn't just hit you. It has a very subtle mint smell. And I have honestly yet to meet anyone who doesn't like that smell. So abundant blooms and just making a bouquet look full is the number one reason. But it also blooms over the span of a three month time frame. So roughly June through August, you're gonna be getting blooms blooms. And like most other mints, the more you cut it, the more blooms you get. It is also hardy down to zone four and it is native to the East Coast in the US. So it actually is a great filler for a lot of us Americans on the East Coast to grow and along both the North and the Southern part of the coastline. But obviously you can still grow this kind of mountain mint, even if you don't live on the East Coast. So let's talk a little bit about growing 101 here. So at the end of the day, this is not the same kind of mint as spearmint or peppermint that belongs in the mentha genus. And because of that, that means that it is less aggressive spreading than those kind of mints. Most people have this fear of growing mints in general because they can get really out of control. And that is true for those kind of mints in the mentha genus, but this is not in the mentha genus. So it does spread, it spreads through rhizomes and about four to six inches a year, but it does not spread as aggressively. So it's a lot easier to tame, especially as someone who is looking to have a more tidy space. Now, that being said, it is deer resistant. So it's not something that you need to grow in an enclosed area. You can keep it outside. You can grow in landscaping. A lot of people like to have it in landscaping because it grows about two to three feet in height. And all you do is just put some low cover type of flowers uh, in the front of it. And it makes it look like a really full and nice landscaping bed. So the other great thing about mountain mint is that it is very attractive to pollinators. You're going to get a lot of beneficials. So not just the pollinators, but also beneficial wasps. So things that can take care of the pests in your yard. So for that reason, I like to spread out my planting of mountain mint throughout my landscaping, but as well as have some in the in the growing area, even though it is deer resistant. So it's a fun trivia for you around mountain mint. It was discovered in 1790 by a French botanist in Pennsylvania. The word muticum actually means blunt and it's likely a reference to the blunt dome shaped flowering head of mountain mint. And last but not least, even though it's called mountain mint, it doesn't actually grow in mountains. It grows in open fields, in lower elevations of the mountain ranges, as well as in along florist edges. So given all of this knowledge, now let's take a field trip out to my field to talk a little bit more about me growing mountain mint this season. Hey guys, so it's field trip time. I have a bunch of mint, that mountain mint, that I've grown in various places, hoping to see one, how they would do, two, if they would take in my 
what is really crappy landscape soil. So according to research, they should, and they did. And I wanna show you just how much I've gotten out of them from a cutting perspective and how much they're already regenerating growth. I know, this is the world's most ridiculous looking landscape area. So it's all filled with wood chips because we had mugwort, which is a very, very invasive rhizome spreading weed. And the only way we could get rid of it was to overlay cardboard on it and then put wood chips on there. I mean, it got so bad over there that there's landscape fabric underneath, which I never use. But anyway, so I wanted to put some mountain mint and have it perennialize over here and have a cover and then eventually put some more low lying types of native flowers here. But this side doesn't have the best soil. I mean, you can kind of see we dug up for that pipe because we just got the driveway repaved. So this is not the best quality soil, which is fine. These plants in here went in, went in in May. Now I had bought these from a nursery or a friend had gotten them from nursery, gave me 10 of hers. And so these went in and I would say at the time they probably just look like this without any flowers. So I've been cutting from them and you can see that they've been setting up growth. They've been setting out growth over here. There's a lot of spreading rhizome activity. You know, right now it's still flat, but it will eventually come upwards. So you can tell that this is actually starting to establish. This didn't do well in the first couple of weeks, probably because I neglected to water enough, but it's, it's settled and it will definitely establish. And I will actually put a few more around this area to make it a little bit more full. This is partially embarrassing that I'm doing a video without having weeded stuff, but this is the reality of the situation. I have weeds everywhere, including in my pot. So the best mint so far has been in my pots. Now this is soil that was amended with my food scraps through the Bakashi method, which I made a video. I'll link it up here and in the description if you're curious about it. But the point is this is good soil. So this is by far the nicest looking mint and it is not only sending up new growth but that growth is growing really quickly so what that tells me is that even though mint can tolerate not so great soil if you put it in good soil it seems to do pretty well and this over here too i've gotten so many cuttings off of this one i actually just cut off of this this morning so at this stage even though you can cut it there is a chance that it will wilt so i like to wait for the flowers to fully establish such as that one, if not even more. The problem is you'll get to a point where the flowers get so established that it starts looking a little bit, um, a little bit old and I'll show you what that looks like in a little bit. Here is another example of a mint in a pot with better soil than the landscaping soil and you can tell it has sent up so much new growth. This is what I'm talking about when I say you wait too long to pick the mint because even though this definitely won't wilt, I don't think you want foliage that looks like this color. So this is done and what I am going to do is I'm going to cut this off so that it sends a signal to regenerate new growth and you can tell it also grew a bit wonky with the stem uh, shape so it's not like I could use it anyway but yeah look at this I mean this is just from one planting and I'm going to show you next what that one um one one pot looks like when it goes in earlier this week I went to pick up some more mint from the same friend who gave me those 10 pots of mint. She's just been so busy that she never got a chance to plant out her mint. And I texted her being like, this mint is amazing. I already got cuttings from the ones that you gave me. If you start any more from seed, I will buy them from you. And she goes, actually, I have about 70. So that's how we actually got to this video right now because I wasn't planning on doing a mint video, but I feel like just mint is such a great filler that if you don't know about this kind of mint, you really should be looking at it. So let me show you what I got from her and what I'm gonna do. So I know it looks like a hot mess right now. These are the flats that the mint comes in from our nursery. So you can see it has the tag here, it's the Muticum. And it has obviously the planting directions on the back. When I got the mints that I just showed you, this is how they look like. There were maybe about two, three. Even just in these pots, they are already regenerating. You know, they don't look necessarily happy. So when I plant these, I'm going to cut them unless if they look something like this and then just let them re-sprout. So my friend was saying, you know, I'm basically selling you uh, really robust, good root systems. And at this point, this is all that I want. 
So I've got another flat over here too, same story. Now we're gonna get to mint that she grew from seed. So I did not grow these from seed and therefore I cannot tell you if it was hard or easy. My friend can basically germinate anything and nurture anything to its full potential. But from what I understand, uh, you can grow it from seed and it's not necessarily always the easiest, but it's not like growing a lisianthus. This stuff does grow pretty decently quickly. And, at, and if I were to guess, I would say that she probably started these sometime in the early spring, late winter. So this is what they look like being confined to two inch pots. They're they're very, uh, you know, they, they need to be transplanted, which I'm hoping to do this weekend. But I will show you in the front, she gave me a few and they look really, really great. And then this is another flat of the seed started mint. So I'm gonna have a lot of mint. Again, world's worst landscaping, pay no attention landscaping. Here's some more mint from the nursery flats. Very similar story as the mint that I had shown you first in the other landscaping bed. Here is the mint though that came from seed. So look at the difference. These came out of the two inch pots. I would argue that these look better than the mints that came in the nursery pot. And it, it hasn't started flowering yet, so I haven't been able to get cuttings, but you can tell that they are very vigorous. They have grown quite a bit in spread and I feel like they will flower this year for me. So I'm super, super happy and excited because this is one, two, three, four, five. This is just five mint plants. So I am going to try to do a little bit more over here, make it a little bit bushier. So the mint will grow to be a couple feet high. And so it'll probably come up to here. And the more that you have, the better it can support each other too. And then again, lower lying flowers over here. The mint in a heavy deer pressure area has really been one of the few things that the deer have not even considered munching on. The hydrangea, obviously, when they're young, the mint, uh, the mint, the deer will munch on. Some of the deer even munched on my Snapdragon, and I think after a couple of munches, they're like, "I'll pass on this." So that is kind of unscathed. The mahogany hibiscus splendor over here, it's finally starting to grow, but you can tell they've been munching on it. They've been a little bit desperate at times. This one's completely gone. Even my echinops, which is supposed to be completely deer resistant, they've been munching on it. So there's just a lot of things now where it makes it really difficult to figure out what you wanna plant into landscaping, especially if you're not gonna buy a mature plant. Like I don't wanna spend all this money buying mature plants, especially if we have a flower farm and there are things I can move out here. So mint has been very, very reliable. Salvia over here has also been very, very reliable. So this stuff obviously smells, it's very strong for animals. And I think that that is a really big consideration for people to take, especially if they're looking to grow foliage outside of a fenced in area and they have deer pressure. To wrap up our field trip, here is a bucket that I harvested this morning for a customer, not using all the stems for this customer, but just harvested a bunch of stuff. Here's some mint. Look how beautifully it pairs with these different colors. I had said earlier that the great thing about this mint is that it does well with a lot of colors. I mean, just look at these different combinations of color palettes. That one was obviously more like a peachy creamy white. Here is a red with that. You obviously have some pinks in here. Here's what it looks like with like an orange, yellow, straw flower type of color. It goes super well with everything, which is why I love the versatility of the mint. I love how it tends to hold up and it doesn't wilt as much as some of the other uh, mints and basils out there especially if you pick at a more mature stage that is really the same for any type of herb when you pick you want to pick a little bit more mature sometimes they will wilt a bit but you just let it condition and they usually always bounce back especially if there's already flowers on there and yeah as a whole i just love this like felty texture and this very it's almost like a lime chartreuse green it's hard to explain but i feel like even the camera doesn't do it justice 
I hope that was helpful for you to see the mountain mint that I have growing outside and the progress depending on where I planted it and at what stage. So I'm hoping to get a lot more mountain mint for next year. Now let's talk about pricing and profitability here. Mountain mint can be really profitable once it's established. At the florist co-op that I sell at, there is another grower who has an abundance of mountain mint and she sells each stem for $1.30. Now these stems are very, very full. They have that central stem with the two side shoots and all of that is flowering and so each one goes for $1.30, which means that they're sold in 10 stem bunches, so for a total of $13. That is pretty good for a perennial that is gonna come back and also multiply every single year. So five years down the road, you're gonna have a ton of mountain mint and if you can sell to florists at that price, it's a pretty good profit in my view. Now, let's say that you don't sell to florists but you make mixed bouquets like for CSA members. Again, a very, very profitable type of filler because a little goes a very long way. And I would say that if you are someone who is making maybe a dozen to 20 bouquets a week, you really don't need more than like 10 mountain mint plants to start off with. You're gonna get cuttings in that first year, they're gonna establish, they're gonna grow more, and you're gonna be able to use it. So all in all, a uh, winner in my book, and I hope that you will consider growing mountain mint. I am starting to see more uh, plug carriers carry them, like I saw Farmer Bailey's carry them. I'm starting to see a lot more uh, places outside of nurseries carry mountain mint, which is surprising to me because it feels like it's starting to get uh, gain popularity. So that's good. It means that a lot more people are becoming aware of the amazingness of mountain mint. So let me know if you have any questions in the comments below, and I will see you in the next video. Thank you.